Okay, good day, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to talk about how we can encode sound into our computer and how we can calculate a file size. Okay, so as a quick reminder, sound is a wave. Um, like all waves, it has a frequency, which is the distance between the peaks, and it has an amplitude, which is the height of the peaks. Uh, sound is analog, which means it's a continuous function. Um, and the problem we have is that computers are digital. So whereas sound is a nice smooth curve, computers can only ever record in fixed steps. Uh, this means you're never going to get a perfect recording. So all we're seeking to do is to get a, a recording that is close enough. So the way we're going to convert this analog sound into a digital computer recording is we are going to record or we're going to take measurements at fixed intervals. Okay, so at every fixed interval, we will measure the amplitude of that sound wave. And this is called sampling. So each measurement is called a sample, and the number of samples per second is called our sample rate. Now, the sample rate is measured in hertz. So if you hear somebody saying 8 hertz, this means they're going to take 8 samples per second. Now, the problem with this approach is that we only know the amplitude of the sound wave when we're measuring it. Now, in between our measurements, the sound wave could change, but we're not going to find out about that change. So that gives us a, a difficulty in that we have a gap in between our measurements and we don't know what's happening in between that gap. Now, the next thing we need to think about is how accurate we're going to be when we are recording each sample. So, in recording sound, the accuracy is given by what we call the bit depth. And the bit depth is the number of bits we are going to use for each sample. Now, if we have a bit depth of two, that means we're going to use two bits for each sample. And if I've got two bits, I can use four different numbers. Okay, just going back to our number systems theory. So two bits means four different levels. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that means that I can only record my sound wave whether it's closer, each sample is closest to a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3. Now there are going to be lots of times when my sound wave is 3.1 or 2.9. But if I can only record it to the, zero, to the nearest uh, whole number, so for instance 2.9 becomes 3, that's going to introduce another gap. Okay, so the difference between the actual sound wave amplitude and the nearest level is another cause of loss of quality of sound. So to help visualize this loss of quality, the green wave here is our actual sound wave. Uh, the blue arrows, as we know, are each of our samples. And the red lines represent the sound that the computer is actually recording. So you can see that at this sample rate and at this bit depth, the computer's uh, the, the representation of the computer's sound is pretty far from the original sound, and that's going to trans that's going to translate to us as a really low quality sound recording. So once again, you're never going to get perfect sound quality because sound waves are analog and computers are digital. What we're looking to do is to get sound quality that is good enough for our needs. And the way that we can get that sound quality is by adjusting the samples and adjusting the bit depth. So on the left hand side here, we have a sound wave in green. We have eight samples being taken in one second, which means that we have a sample rate of eight hertz. And I have a bit depth of two bits, which means I have four levels, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we can see that the red lines are pretty far away from the sound wave. So that's going to re result in a pretty low quality recording. Now, on the right hand side, I've upped my sample rate to 16 hertz. So that means 16 samples per second and I've upped my bit depth to three bits, 
So that means I have eight possible levels, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you can see that the red lines now, well, first of all, the red lines uh, are narrower because we have more samples in a second. And also, there are more levels of which we can record at because I've increased my bit depth. So this is going to get us an improved quality sound recording. Now, is it going to be perfect? No. Is it going to be good enough? Well, that's up for the person who's uh, commissioning this. So then you might say, well, actually, I want to increase my sample rates and I want to increase my bit depth or one or the other to improve the quality in some way. So as a final takeaway from this process, increasing the bit depth makes each sample more accurate and increasing the sample rate means more samples. Now the trade-off against increased quality is file size. So the better the quality, the bigger the file size. So if you imagine we, we are setting up a recording for a music band, then the first thing we need to think about is what we call channels. So you might have a channel next to the vocalist, you might have a channel next to the um, lead guitarist, you might have a channel next to the drummer. Those three channels then would all be combined into a single recording. Okay. Now, a, every sound file can have a single channel or it can have multiple channels. The next thing we need to think about is what we call our bit rate. So our bit rate is the number of bits required to store one second of sound. And we calculate that by saying what's our bit depth times our sample rate. So finally, we can calculate our file size by taking our channels, taking the number of seconds that the sound recording lasts for, and then multiply that by the number of bits per second. So here we have an example. Uh, I have a sound recording that is going to have a bit depth of 3 bits and a sample rate of 10 hertz. Okay. Uh, the recording has two channels and lasts for 30 seconds. Calculate the file size. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the bit rate, or how many bits per second do I need. And to calculate that, we can see that I have a bit depth of three bits. So each measurement is going to take three bits. A sample rate is 10 hertz. So each measurement takes three bits. I have 10 samples per second, so that's going to mean 30 bits per second for my bit rate. Okay, My bit depth is 3 bits. I'm taking 10 samples per second, so in total I need 30 bits per second. Then we were told that we have two channels and that the music lasts for 30 seconds and that I, from my bit rate, I know that that's 30 bits per second. So the total file size is going to be 30 bits per second times 30 seconds times two channels, which gives me 1800 bits in total. And then I divide that by eight to get 225 bytes. So finally, I just want to give you a, a real world example of uh, the sound quality. So when you're listening to CD music, um, or MP3 is not that dissimilar, but it's definitely CDs. CDs have a bit depth of 16 bits. So each measurement can record 65,536 different levels. CD's sample rate is 41,000 hertz. So a CD gets sampled 41,000 times a second to 65,536 different levels. Okay, That means you have a bit rate of 656,000 bits per second. So for every second of music you are listening to on your Bluetooth headphones, the computer is transferring 656,000 bits for every second. Okay, so 
enjoy that. Think about it the next time you're listening to your uh, next time you listen to your music, and I will see you all soon. Take care.